coordinate better. Okay, so what I'd like to do, uh, last week we didn't really review some of the things that, uh, that's very, very important on your handout. Uh, and I'd like to talk about it. I want to first ask a question. Um, in terms of being transparent, in terms of being transparent, because this, the, the book, like emotionally, for those of you who do not have the book, uh, it's a very, very good book, uh, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It says it's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. And for, who, who actually got the book? Raise your hand. Okay, gotcha. So you all know pretty much uh, what's going on. For those of you that have not gotten the book, I would highly recommend it because what it's doing is this pastor, what he did, he was going through a transition in his church. And uh, the transition was people were not being who they are. They were all putting on facades. And you know, with one of the screens, I showed you that, you know, he says that 10% is what we show. The 90% we don't show that at all. It's like an iceberg. We only see the 10% on the top and then the, the big 90% at the bottom. And what his hypothesis is, is that it prevents us from growing spiritually. You know, the, the, the scripture says, I beseech you, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. See, a living sacrifice is when you are giving yourself to a place where God is going to renew you and restore you. And what that means is that there may be something going on in your life. Instead of keeping it a secret to yourself, you need to present it to God. Now, we know that God hears everything and he knows everything. However, you're the pro we're the problem because if we're not presenting it to God, then we're fooling ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. And if we're deceiving ourselves and we are having this facade that, that we're not really showing everyone, we're showing that other person, then when God is ministering to you, sometimes we get such in a deceptive mode with ourselves, we don't understand what God is doing. Because we have deceived ourselves to the point that when God is ministering to us, we're like, what's going on? So, you know, the scripture again, in Romans 12, 1, it says, I present you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Then, and this is Paul talking. Now, Paul is talking to, to an audience of people in Rome. Paul is talking to the Hellenists. Those are people who are just all over the place in terms of their belief. He's talking to the, the, the Hasidic Jews, right? He's talking to the Aramaic people. He's talking to everyone. And what he's saying to the, the entire audience in Rome, he said that the things that you learned in the past, your conduct in the past, leave it alone. Give it to God. Present yourself a living sacrifice, meaning that you're giving all your worries, all your concerns, all your issues to God, and you're acknowledging that you gave it to God. Because when we don't acknowledge it, then we're not telling ourselves the truth. It says, Make sure your body is presented by a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which is the least you can do. That's what Paul is saying. Reasonable service means that that's the least you can do is be honest with yourself. And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. And this word conform is metatimaskiso, meaning the outside. You know, you, you are conforming on the outside, but you're not conforming on the inside. But be ye transformed by the renewing of mind. That's the metamorphophumai, meaning that you are really being transformed from your spirit man to the outside man. And what, what this, this writer is saying, and I have to agree, we hide that. So transformed by the renewing of your mind, because it starts in how you think, right? That ye may prove what is good and acceptable. We want to know what the will of God is. How can we know the will of God when we're not really honest with our will? How can we understand what God is doing with, for us and with us when we're not being honest? When we don't know the difference between his permissive will and his decreed will. And there's a difference. A decreed will is his sovereign will of what is store, in store for you and what's going to happen. His permissive will is, is your will getting involved, messing up stuff jacking up stuff he's allowing that because he's a free will god 
He doesn't create robots. But he's telling us in our free will that we read the scriptures and we need to be honest and transparent because it can create problems, right? It's a problem when you don't understand what God is doing for you and with you. I give you an example, okay? I want to be transparent. I've, I've, I've been an athlete all through a lot of years and, you know, working out and stuff like that into the martial arts game and all that thing, right, for many, 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 many years. And what do I do? I come down with what? I had open heart surgery, five bypasses. Five. I was almost 300 pounds. I was 325 pounds. Now I'm 225. I lost a person. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. But I had to be honest with myself. What's God? Why did you allow that? Well, maybe it's something I'm bringing into my own life because God lets me have he, choices. Maybe it was too many, too many banana flambés. Maybe it was too many roasted duck with garlic, potatoes, and, and maybe it was too much traveling. You know, in my in my job where, as a consultant, I've been all through Europe. I've been a whole bunch of places with an expense account, and I used to just load up. Give me double roasted duck. That was my favorite meal. I want a double duck. You know, the ducks are small. So I want a double duck with double roasted potatoes with, with, with uh, sautéed string beans. Right? I used to eat that like it was gumdrops. Right? But I had to be honest with myself because when, when I went to the doctor and he says to me, we have a problem, we need to rush you to the hospital right now. And I was scheduled, it was on a Tuesday, I was scheduled to do a wedding on Saturday. I said, well, can I, I got to fly to Florida, can I do a wedding? And he said, man, you can't do nothing. And it was devastating to me to go to the hospital and know they're going to open you up, right? But I had to be honest. It took me a minute to be honest with myself to understand how I got there. God didn't do it to me. He allowed it to happen. So he can teach me a lesson. Okay, so now... After that, I'm, I'm asking myself, okay, <coughs> excuse me, okay, I'm back in, I'm back on, on top of things, okay, my wife gets sick, right, she gets sick after 30 years, working in a law business, okay, so she transitioned, she was on a ventilator for a year and a half, could not talk, so I'm like, we've done well, Lord, we, we do this, what, what, what is going on? That's one of the mysteries, just to let you know. Yeah. When someone dies and you wonder why these heathens are still running around, yes. right, doing yeah. the wrong thing, yeah. that's a mystery of God. Yeah. That's one of the things that you can ask when you see the master. Mm -hmm. Why would you let the evil stay and the good have to transition yeah. there? Those are some mystery questions. And then, okay, so that happened. And then... Right, so now I'm losing weight and everything. Okay, I get, I go to the doctor. You know, men don't like to get their prostate check, right? Check, and he said, you know what? You got a little cancer. I'm like, what? Now keep in mind, the wife just passed away three, two years ago. You got cancer. I'm like, what the heck? Okay, so but guess what? I gotta think about all those banana, banana flambés. I gotta think about all those roasted ducks. I gotta think about all that stuff. That I ate all the sweet potato pies, the collard greens, the candy yams, all that stuff, right? And I wasn't blaming God. It was, it was up to me. A lot of times we have to be honest with ourselves. And don't be angry at God, but get angry at yourself and say, what do I do? Okay, so fine. I come back. He said, it's so tiny. Why did you do this? I said, why did you come to me? I said, I don't know. I just figured I'd go. Okay. I come back. Eight months later, he said, it's aggressive. It tripled. He said, you're fortunate because you would have died. So guess what? I go through radiation, right? And now, okay, fine. So when you look back, you say, okay, uh, you know, I've done the right things. I know you think you, you've done the right things. You know, we, we, I pray, I supplicate, I do all those different things. But then guess what? I have open heart surgery, right? My wife transitions, right? And I have prostate cancer. See, but the scripture says all things work together for the good of them that love God, them that are called according to his purpose. So we have to realize that we have to be honest with ourselves. That's presenting yourself a living sacrifice, being honest. So God can then speak to you where you understand it. Because he is speaking in a clear fashion. It's just that we deceive ourselves. Right. I, I talk to Taylor all the time. Now, don't, ladies, don't, don't get angry with me. 
But I, I think we should have a natural day in the church. I know Diane is like, Reverend, Diane's looking at me. I'm, I'm just, Diane, I'm just joking because you look, you're like, I know where you're going. I think we should have a natural day where we just see who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, like, don't put the perm and all that. I know I got a bald head, so guess what? I don't have a whole lot to say about hair. But let me tell you, sometimes we deceive ourselves. Sometimes we put on so much, then we take it off. We don't like ourselves. That's a problem. There's nothing wrong with makeup. Makeup makes up for what you don't have. Amen? That's what it is. It makes up for what you don't have. It's all right. But when that makeup becomes your personification, when that car that that person is driving, that Benz, the brother driving a Benz, he's driving a, a Lexus, and that's all that he thinks he is, that's a, that's a problem. You're deceiving yourself. So the scripture tells us that we that that God is going, if we're honest, renew your mind daily. That's what the scripture says. We got to confess our sins, let it go daily. Now the problem is that it's hard sometimes. But God will give you joy in the midst of your tears. That's Psalms 126. Sometimes when we're honest with ourselves, it becomes hard. But in your in your in Psalms 126, I believe it's around verse 8, he said, in your tears, he'll give you joy. That's a that's a wonderful God. That's a wonderful God that in the midst of your problems, in the midst of your despair, he's going to give you joy because there's something inside of the spirit of God that will minister to our spirit to make us say, Abba, Father, and hallelujah. Okay, so it says to every man that's among you, don't think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly. You know, guys can get drunk on some stuff. I was a consultant for 20 years. Guys make a whole lot of money. And a lot of times they will put on this persona, this, this whole, and, and it's really not real. So we have that tendency sometimes to have the creation govern the creation in our mind versus the creator. Okay? Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. So what that says is that that's big. That if, if I don't think more highly of myself, then what I can do is just be honest. But think soberly, according as God has dealt every man a measure of faith. Now, one of the problems, and that's what the video, hopefully next week, I'll make sure it, it, it runs better. I'll get here and, and check the audio and things like that. They're talking about how the transformation process happened through the Holy Spirit. Although this is a secular book, it's based on a, a man that is born again believer, and this is how he's reflecting for the church so that we can grow and be more than what we can do. Because the church is in a problem. I got to be honest with you. And America is shrinking. Across the world, it's growing. Islam is growing in America. And see what happens, let's be honest, because the book's about transparency. So one of the problems is that we put on facades in church. You know, instead of being honest, one of the most honest people in Deacon Winfield, I hope you don't mind me mentioning you, me and Deacon Winfield have honest conversations. We do. I tell him, I may generalize about some, you know, these people, they do this and do that. He said, he said, brother, all people do it. It's not just the people in your community. All people, what are you going to do to make it better? What are you going to do for yourself to make the situation better? So sometimes we have to realize that this, this living sacrifice is having those tough conversations. And I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. You have a, a direct conversation, you're being polite. And you know, Galatians 6, 6, 4 says, those who are spirit, when, when your brother is caught in a fault, a fault, those who are spiritual supposed to restore that person in meekness and humbleness, least you will be tempted. That's a divine law. If, Sean, if, if Reverend Brian is doing something wrong, I come to him haughty, guess what? God's going to, that's a reaping and sowing. God's going to come back and do something to me so I can realize what I did wrong. And see, that's the type of God that we serve. And some of us will fight that. Others will say, you know what? I did the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing in judging. Like, we can evaluate, but we can't, we, we can't get into condemnation. Because there's different words for judging. 
You know, um, you know, we, we're supposed to judge righteously. You know, because righteously, I know that's a white blouse, that's a that's a turquoise blouse. That's judging righteously, but to say that you are that blouse, and that's all you are, that's condemnation. See, one of the problems is that we don't understand the difference, or we don't practice it. So we start to cover up. Someone does the wrong thing, instead of pulling pull them to the side and have a conversation, we get into those dramatic situations. So this, this text is very, very vital about our soul person, our, our spiritual man. And it's, it's time for us to really, based on this, this scripture, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Give it up. Give up those thoughts. And be transparent and be honest. Now, we need a safeguard system that when I'm transparent, I'm not taking off the ministerial staff. You know what I mean? If I'm being transparent in a very dignified way, or you being transparent, but now you can't be a deaconess. You can't be a deacon. You can't be this. Just because you said this is what I used to do or this is what I don't like. Well, how about praying for the person? I think I said it last week. P-R-A-Y versus P-R-E-Y. And see... The thing about it is that when we, when we P-R-A-Y and we present ourselves a living sacrifice and we renew our mind, we got to stick together when somebody's standing for righteousness. We can't just, you know, shut, uh, put it to the side. We got to stick together when somebody has put you in a ditch like Joseph. You know the story of Joseph? He had a coat of many colors, right? Right? And what happened? He was bragging. Okay? And his brothers put him in a ditch. But God's sovereignty, right, picked him up through Muslims, got him in Egypt, and Joseph was being prepared to provide for the Jews during a famine. So all things work together for the good. But see, there's some dysfunction. you got to be honest. Because Jesse shouldn't have gave the young boy a beautiful coat. And he bragging in front of his brothers. That's what happened. Look what I got. I got this nice coat. I'm the youngest and all that stuff. And the brother's like, I got something for you. We're going to put you in a ditch. And we, then we're going to let you go. We're going to walk away from you. But seeing God's sovereignty, the Israelite traders picked them up, got them in Egypt. And next thing you know, the preparation that he was then available to God. And he provided for God the blessings for God's people. So when we're transparent, God is going to bless us. You know, it may not good. It may not be good for the natural character, but it's good for the spiritual character. Any questions about that? Let's just open that up because I want to. You know, this is something that we really should discuss because we're the leaders of the church. You know, and it's and it's really time. Based on this, I mean, based on what God is saying, it's time to you know shake off the old stuff and let's put on the new stuff. Yes, ma'am. When I first started I'm just coming, coming closer. I have a hearing. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I first came here, it's only been here for five or six years now, where I met, and he was very real, very, very kind. Deacon he, Winfield? Yes, Deacon Wilson. Winfield, right? Winfield. <laughs> yes, he's right there. Okay. That's that's my mentor. He was very good to me. Don't say nothing mad, bad about him. No, I'm not. Are you kidding me? Just, no, I'm going to speak the truth. I just, I and know. he was very good to me. Yeah. And he welcomed me in, wasn't no facade, nothing. He was just real. Yes. And then he knew I wasn't happy with my job because it was taking me away from church. Amen. So he made it convenient for me to have communion because I got mad because I kept missing communion. He made it convenient for me to come in even though I you know, had to go to work. He would give it to me early. And, and I would be able to have it. And he made ways for me so I'm able to, you know, still keep in church and still felt close to the church. Then there was another one, I know she's gonna get mad at me, but Diana, and she is my mentor. And she watched it, she, she, they just took me Hayes, in. Hayes, Diana Hayes. Diana Hayes. I know her, I know and Diana she take, she just took me in right away as and my mentor. And she, to this day, we're close. And I'm just so grateful to have two people that I can look up to that I know what this church is made up Amen. of. Amen. Which also, I was already me anyway. I, went, I ain't gonna ever change this to me. But yes. it's good to have two people that I saw that was yeah, good. It's good to have more than that. Yeah, definitely. It's good to have everybody. Now, everybody can't do everything. Right, right. But we, we, we can be good so-called Christians. Yes. You know, we can give of ourselves. Right. We, we can support and we can pray and we can be honest. Yes. And, that's, and that's what this, is, this book is talking about, is that the church is in, a, is in a dire strait because there's too many facades going on. 
and we're not not being honest. So praise the Lord. Thank God for that. Thank you for that testimony. But, but you see, God has the scripture. Said God has dealt every man a measure of faith. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence of things not seen. When you're being transparent, you got to have faith in God. Yeah. You got to have faith in God, and you have to also have the Spirit of God because there's some people you cannot be transparent to. You know, there's some people, guess what? Jesus, when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, right? When he came out of the wilderness. And keep in mind, Jesus did not have anything going. He didn't have a lot of material things. He was just into the fasting and prayer with, with, with Yahweh, with God. As soon as he comes out, the enemy is right there. And you know what the enemy does? He uses the things of the world to lure you. Because yeah. you have three enemies. You got your own flesh, and we're gonna look at Galatians 5 uh, 16, right? We have you have your own flesh, Galatians 5, 16, and that's where we can really determine a lot of times, is it really me or is it the enemy in me? Right? If someone has Galatians 5, 7, 5, I think it's 5, 16. And I, if I get it before you do, I, I'll read it. The walking spirit? Yeah, the, the manifestations of flesh, Reverend Brian. 5, 16? I believe, I believe it's like 7 or 10. It talks about the manifestation of the flesh. You did run well, is that it? Okay. Will the spirit wait? Galatians uh, 5. I'm sorry, my, my Bible from sisters. This I say then. If you have it, can you read it? This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It starts really at 16, excuse me. This was she read. Uh, oh, you saw it at 16? That's what she read. Oh, okay. Right. Now, if, if you notice, it says. This I say, then walk in the spirit, walk in the pneumos, the spirit of God, right? And, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lust, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary to one another, so that ye cannot do the things that you can do. Paul knew something about his flesh and the spirit. Paul was wrestling with it. The things that he wanted to do, he could not do. And the things that he did, he did not want to do. So there's a battle going on inside of us. We have to be honest about the battle. We have to be honest and tell God about that thing that, so that we know. He knows already, but you are doing it so that you will realize where you are, just like Adam and Eve, right? When they ate the forbidden fruit, he said, where are you, Adam? And the scripture says his eyes were open. Now, he had physical eyes, but there's some, you have some spiritual eyes. The same spiritual eyes you have is going to go back to God when you die. That's the spirit that keeps you alive. That's the spirit that's speaking to death. So it says if you be led in spirit, you're not under the law, meaning that you don't have to. You know, the, the law was great for allowing us to understand what sin is all about. But we could not commit, we could not keep the law. Okay? It says now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery right fornication this is the flesh someone told me one time take the word flesh spell it backwards take H off from holy and you got self I say that again take the word flesh spell it backwards take H off of holiness and you got self so the scripture is really telling us this is what we do apart from God Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, having a desire for a whole lot of stuff. Idolatry, right? Putting things before God. Witchcraft, right? Which is pharmakia. It's, it's a Greek word, pharmakia, for pharmaceuticals. There's some good pharmaceuticals and there's some bad pharmaceuticals. But these are the things, uh, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, and murdering, drunkenness, re reveling having a lot of parties and, and the like of which I tell you before as I have also told you in times past they which do shall not shall not inherit the kingdom of God now I'm not saying you're not going to heaven the kingdom of God is a system Jesus is our king 
He has rules. He has a process and a procedure. And we're supposed to operate in those process and procedures. So you will not inherit it. Because we are inheritors because of our, our, of our Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. So when we look at this, then it tells us, it makes it real clear. It says, look at verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Love casts out fear. That's what the Corinthian writer in 13 says. Love casts out fear. When you love unconditionally, that means that no one can do anything to affect how you feel. Because you love him like God loves. You love him based on what God says, not what I do. He says, these are the, the, the fruit of love. Joy. Not happiness, but joy. Happiness come from happenings around you. And we have to be conscious about that. I'm happy. Uh, you need to, I have to remind myself. I don't need to be happy. I need some joy. Joy comes in the morning, and it comes in the evening, and it comes during the day. Joy is what God gives you regardless of what's happening around you. It could be hell and high water, but you still feeling like God got your back. That's joy. Happiness is when things happen around you. So we have to be honest with ourselves. Are we into happiness or are we into joy? How do I get joy versus happiness? We could talk about that later. Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness, temperance, right? Against there is no law. And, and they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. And if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So that's a recipe for being transparent. Any, any questions about that? Now, it, okay, sorry about that. Okay. Romans 8, 16. It says, the Spirit bear witness to our spirit. That's, that's, that's vital. Now, the Spirit can bear witness, and if you're not a believer, it comes upon you. Because the only way you can understand Jesus Christ, that Spirit has to come upon you. It may not be in you. In the Old Testament, David would say a lot of times, Lord, do not take this Spirit away from me. Because it gives you anointing. So here it says the spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God. You know, many times when we start to be honest and transparent, people look at you like, that's not God. Yeah, it is God. God knows there's nothing that we can do that God cannot fix it. The scripture says, cast your cares upon him because he cared for you. You know, there's some things your shoulders aren't big enough to carry. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. There's some things that you shouldn't even be dealing with. You got to give it to God. Yeah. Sometimes when you deal with people on issues, you say, I'm going to give it to God. And yeah. really give it to yeah. God. Yeah. And when God ministers to you, then you have to move in that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You don't have to be authenticated by anyone. Amen. Because when God says it, that's what it is. Right. Sometimes we want to be authenticated by our associates, our constituents. It says, and, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if ye be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify together. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our sicknesses, our infirmities, right? There's things that's going on, and, and the Spirit will, will, will speak to you and fix that. Some of our illnesses are really based on sin and not the physicalness. You know, if you're holding a grudge or you don't want a person walk in the room, you don't want to be bothered with them, they just took your joy. You're giving that person more power than God. Mm -hmm. You should have joy anyway, and I'm a victim of that. Everything I say to you, it, it happens to me. Some folks that walk in here, not at Christ Baptist, uh, and next thing you know, I'm getting quiet. But I should have joy. I should still do what God has called me to do. And I have to remind myself. It says, likewise, the Spirit help our sicknesses, but we know not what we should pray for as we ought. The Spirit itself make an intercession with groanings. I don't know if you ever prayed to the fact, uh, to the point that you like, you're, 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 you're like having problems. You don't know what to say. You know, it's hurting you. You're crying. God loves that. God loves that when, when, he's, when, when you're praying and you are 
or having some, some begrudging thoughts because he's working the flesh out. Right? And one thing about prayer, a lot of things about prayer, one thing about prayer, let's be honest, when you come out of it, don't you feel better? Amen. Amen. I, I feel better. Yes. Amen. I feel humble. Okay? It says, the spirit make intercession with groanings that we cannot utter. And he that searches the heart know what's in the mind of the spirit because the spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know, we love this part, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and call. Well, let me tell you, that's a hard saying. All things work together for good, okay? You got open heart surgery, you got this, you got that, you got this, you, have, you don't have your mate, your mate passed away, all, but God says all things work together for the good. Yeah, you're going to be heartbroken, but God knows how to mend a broken heart. Amen? Amen? God knows how to wrap his love around your problem and quicken you where you have joy versus happiness. Amen? Amen. But we have to understand, too, the door of our, our situation. When we're angry, it comes from one of these things. When we're angry, right, it's because of hostility, irritability, some annoyance. You got to ask yourself, what's, what's making me angry? God, help me. Help me when I see when, when I see Minister Thomason come in. Lord, give me the strength to say hallelujah and hug my brother. Now, me and Reggie, Reverend Thompson, we don't have an issue, but I pick on the ministers because they can handle it, okay? And I pick on the deacons, they can handle it. But, 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 but you got to ask that question because sometimes Reggie may get on my case. And I have to look at that. And I can't hold him accountable. I got to hold myself accountable to God. When someone comes and tells you the truth, and you may not believe it, you got to examine it. You got to ask, hmm, especially if more than one person told you that. If more than one person told you, you got to be reflective and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because if you tell yourself they're lying, they're wrong, then as God speaks to you, you're going to dismiss that. You're going to say, that's not for me. That's for Minister Bryant. <laughs> you know, God should talk to, to Deacon Winfield. God should talk to this person, that person. Why are you talking to me? Well, he's talking to you because it is you. It is. It's the man in the mirror. Right. Amen? Amen? Sadness. It's because of some grief. You got to ask yourself, why am I grieving? Why do I have self-pity? Why do I have despair, dejection, loneliness, right? You don't have to be alone, but you can be lonely. Mm -hmm. You can be in an audience of people and be lonely. Mm -hmm. You got to ask yourself, God, what are you saying to me? Fix me, quicken me, so I can go, better, I can go forward and be the best me for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Fear. You know, anxiety, right? Edginess, nervousness, fright, terror, apprehension. That's, that comes from fear. When a person is apprehensive, that's a problem. We got to ask ourselves and we got to tell God, I know I got a problem. Help me, I'm ready to receive it. Enjoyment, right? We, we know about joy. You know, typically when you got enjoyment, you got relief, contentment. We, we love that, like the euphoria, the ecstasy of, about what's happening in our life. Love. You know, love is, love is a very interesting thing because you got four types of love. When it says love your enemy, we got to understand what God is saying. We got to understand the difference between Sorgos by Leo, Sorgos by Leo, Eros, and Agape. Love your enemy. I ain't talking about store guys. That's family love. You don't love your enemy like your family. You love him unconditionally. So when we look at that, you can't love your enemy in an eroticism way. Eros is eroticism. So when we understand the language of God, we got to understand what God is saying so when he speaks to us, we can say amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Any questions about that? Do you believe that God is speaking prior to this book? Do you believe that God is speaking to you through your feelings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. Some people believe that I can't feel because I may go into a syndrome of sin. You know, if I'm feeling that I'm sinning. No, if you confess your sins, mm -hmm. he's faithful and just to forgive you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you think you have permission by God to consider your feelings, to name them, to express them openly? 
especially the difficult feelings. Right. You know, the ones like, you know, if that person say another thing to me, you know what, I, I, I deacon him all right. I serve him. Deacons is, the word is gakonos, servants. So you know how the enemy, I serve him. I serve him. But you got to be honest about that. You know, you, you have to pray for me. Pray for other people. And deal with it. And tell that person, this is what I don't appreciate and I'm just coming to you. So we can work some things out. And if they got a problem with it, that's their problem. But see, if we all did that, then it will be less conformity. When we don't do it, there's hidden conformity. I'm not going to say nothing because next thing you know, I'm not going to be on this committee. I won't be able to sing. I ain't going to be able to usher. You know, people want to shake my hand, walk right by. All that stuff. Let God deal with them. Amen? Amen? When we deny our own pain, losses, and feelings, year after year, we become less and less human. Because humans, you feel. Mm -hmm. We transform slowly into an empty shell. Smiley faces painted on them. But when we begin to allow ourselves to feel a wider range of emotion, including sadness, depression, fear, anger, um, a revolution starts and your spirit is unleashed. Failure to appreciate the biblical place of feeling within a larger Christian lives has done extensive damage, keeping free people in slavery. Jesus came to do what? To set what? The captives free. Now, you know why they were captives, right? The Jews was captive because they wanted the Messiah to come and wipe out Rome. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to come in on a white horse. They don't want their Messiah to go to the cross. The Hellenists, they wanted to bring in Zeus and Thor and all that stuff, right? So when we look at the, the Muslims, they wanted to bring in their stuff. So when, when we look at this, we have to realize, we have to realize that, that Christ came to free you. Because once he frees you, then he can instill in you. Once you let that shackle down. You know, during slavery, many did not want to leave the plantation. Like in Egypt. Why did you get us out here? The, for freedom. Freedom comes with a cost. Freedom comes with a sacrifice. Amen? Amen. So, when we look at, at, at um, let's look at James 5.15. How much time do we have, Taylor? Amen. Oh. We have 944. 941? Okay. 44. Okay, 44. I told him to stop at, uh, mm -hmm. at 45. But the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up and, and have committed sins. They shall be forgiven. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You know, it's saying when you let go and you let God, yeah, yeah. when you really let go and let God, Amen. God will start blessing you in a way. It don't always mean money in your pocket, gas in the tank. There's a spiritual blessing. There's a spiritual revolution that you now change into another person that God has called you. You change into the new man. Amen? If we confess our sins. Um, look at the other text. And, and that... Ye may put on new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man the truth with his neighbor. Woo! The truth. I try to speak truth. It's not easy. No, it ain't. Woo! Dad, you yeah. speak some truth. I'm being honest. Yeah, you get a whole lot of stuff going on. Just pray for me. For we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon you. It's nothing wrong with being angry. That's a, that's a natural. You just can't get wrapped. Right. It says be angry. God is saying be angry so you can say that guess what? I, I'm angry. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you don't get heated and now you want to destroy me. I have to say, Taylor, you make me angry sometimes. Really do. You know, and Taylor look at me and say, well, you make me angry too, Dad. And I have to say, well, in what way? And then I have to ask myself, how can I not do that? We have to do that among each other. You know, I know it's uncomfortable because we've been so conformed. Amen? Amen. Confessing the sins. Right? He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And the word of God 
it's, excuse me, it's not in us. When you look at, uh, I recommend next week we're going to get into a couple of things that the book talks about, which is very good. The book talks about a couple uh, areas that was relative to, to Jesus. The book talks about how performance based gives you pride. If you try to perform, and we're just going to end here, and we're going to start next week. For example, if you're competing, that's a form of pride. Because you're competing with this person versus letting God move you. Because when you compete, you want to be better than that person. You want to have a better process and all that. We should not look at it like that. I know it's, it's a renewing of the mind. What we do, we do it because God has called us. It's not about competition at all. It's about completing what God has called you to do in terms of his providential care. Amen? So we're going to come back next week. I will have the audio because there's some other things I wanted to discuss that, uh, that we're not able to, uh, to get into. So excuse me. Next week I will go and test everything out. Any questions at all about anything? Gotta have some questions, y'all. Thank you. I have, no, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I've done what you do a lot. I go to my husband and I speak to my daughter. And I ask them what do they think of me. And I mean, I like some of it, but I, uh, God has made me get to that point. And they're right. Yeah. And I have to work on it. I ask the guys, I, I manage. I ask them, how can I be a better supervisor to you? And let me tell you, they gave me some good tips. Mm -hmm. They gave me excellent tips. And some was hard. Yes. Some might say, well, the reason I do that is because of what you do, but I didn't say that. No, because that's, that's not what you say, but in my back of my mind, yeah. that's what I said, but I took that, and guess what? Thanks be to God, my team is one of the strongest teams in my facility. We, we stick to each other. We, we, we help each other. We really do, because I had to be transparent and open. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord God. We ask that you have our technology work, Lord God. Have us do what we need to do so we can get everything in the a, in a presentation way, Lord God. We ask that you bless those who are hearing this, the, the, this lesson, Lord God. We ask that you protect them and provide for them, Lord God. We ask that you pave their way, Lord God. We ask that you hide them under the shadow of your wings so they'll bring you the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. 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 And God bless you.